Oh, don't get hung up on family and whatnot. Oliver doesn't understand these things. All I know is that you've run into two special toys in a row. And Eve must be very, very angry right now. Our plan is about to succeed! Ah! The hell was that? Before you can see what's happened, Oliver has been suddenly struck by an inexplicable force crashing into a steel pipe in the distance making a huge noise. From the depths of the endless corridor, a faint, bold, chilling murmur creeps into your ears. Guests are not welcome here. As if out of toys, instinctive fear of its owner, you feel the fabric all of your body tense involuntarily. If you can quietly fit into this place, I can pretend you don't exist. But today is Bone's birthday. It'll be complicated if Bass and Benna are absent. Who's Benna? Is the ball Benna? As the dust gradually settles, the sound of metal wheels. Metal wheels? She has a wheelchair with metal wheels? What the fuck? Rolling over rough concrete nears. Finally, those doll like ball jointed legs come into view. Hmm. She looks like an, uh,. Like a mega, like super intelligent villain from like a you know post industrial society video game or something, FPS video game. Look up and see a pale girl in a wheelchair. Her gaze is downcast, staring at screaming chicken and ball defeated by you on the ground. Eve. I can't bend over. Do you mind picking up these two toys? They're my very important family. This is a very similar line to one of the Mother and My Sinners, uh, Coca Leak. She says this, I can't bend over, can you pick up my jacket and put it on me please? <laughs> that's just what it reminded me of. <laughs> oh, that's funny. She's indeed talking to you, but she doesn't look at you once. The corridor is exceptionally quiet, all sounds seemingly swallowed by darkness behind Eve. Even the noise of all your scrambling up from the ground behind you is amplified infinitely in this silence. You pat your recently squashed body, take two steps forward and pick up the two toys with your cotton palms. That important to you, what a coincidence, you also hold something very important to me. There's no response, but thankfully she doesn't seem infuriated either. You don't sense any obvious hostility, she simply waits for you to bring her the two toys silently. But she'll still have to bend over to pick them up from my hands because my character is super small right now. Holding up a screaming chicken and a ball at the same time is no easy task for a rag doll like you, but you still take the risk and begin negotiating while dragging them behind you. My body and my friend's body. I'll give you back your family in exchange. You'll give those back to me. He doesn't respond for a long time. The light in the corridor is too dim. And are you imagining it? Her gaze seems to linger on you for a moment at last. You and your friend entered my factory, and then became toys. To be precise, my friend got turned into a toy by you first. I only came to bring her back. We tried leaving through other exits, but Oliver said it wouldn't work. Only you can change us back. I can't. He responds coldly without looking at you. How can that be? You transformed us, you must be able to undo it. I... can't. Hmm. I'm considering the fact that... Th there was a tone in her voice, very intimidating there, by the way. Very good voice acting. Hmm. If we tell her we are the NBCC's chief, would that be threatening? Or like, would that give her like, blackmail material? She repeatedly she repeats stiffly. I've warned everyone to stay away. This is my home. I own it. Property papers, please. How is it my fault when they insisted on barging in? She lowers her head, her voice is a bit muffled. She's just murmuring to herself. I don't know how to change you back. I'm just a useless child who's seen as a burden it took me a long time to come this far 
to make this factory feel like home. I'm gonna increase the brightness when I stop this recording because it is a bit too dark. But outsiders like you insist on barging in. And now you even want to take my family away from me. And you even dare to threaten me? I mean, we can't really threaten her with like, it's not like we can break plastic toys with cotton hands. Familiar power gathers all of a sudden, powerful overwhelming mania filling every air, bit of air in the factory. I apologize, I didn't mean any harm. Calm down, we can talk it out. I'm not trying to threaten you or snoop around, I only came to save my friend. And a cough cough. A breath pressure triggers an involuntary resistance in you, but attacked by the defensive urge and the terrifying force from within and without, you begin coughing and dry heaving. She's speeding up the toyification of everything in Bonanote! Get out of here now, you stupid doll! Is she looking at the screen? No, she is not. I was like, is she looking at the screen? That would be kind of cool. It's so fucking dark. You know what? I'm gonna stop this recording and increase the light and you know, brightness. Now it's a bit too bright, but at least in this scene I can see a bit better. Yeah, now that looks much better. Hopefully they don't throw any bright scenes at us, otherwise I would get flash banged. Stop wasting your time! If she could be persuaded, I wouldn't need your help! That is the toyification Pepper has told me about. Covering your mouth and nose, you catch what you cough up from your body a clump of blood-stained cotton are you shocked but that friend of yours has been going through this all along if she really means that much to you how could you lose her what is that supposed to mean shouldn't you cherish your important ones and keep them by your side isn't it a song? If you love him, let him go. <laughs> I guess she's not heard that one. The girl in the wheelchair looks confusedly in an unknown direction, propping up her body feebly. He's right. You're all foolish, indifferent, and arrogant intruders. Who's he? Do the lives of intruders matter? As you're going through all of this, does anyone else care? They'll just keep tearing up your wounds to satisfy themselves. But then, who's going to fulfill your tiny wish? It's only natural that a toy factory is filled with toys. Then you'll all turn into toys, even if it'll cost you your life. But this is someone who... I'm guessing he's from the underground? All of you will... turn into toys! Hmm... It's like the dreamy bubble event, but more annoying. They have up the, like, creepy factor because this one is actually really creepy and troubling. Suddenly Eve turns to you, her pupils seem to glow with a faint frightening light. A single glance makes you feel like you're tumbling into an icy cellar. Watch out! As Oliver cries out, the visible mania and miasma gathers around Eve. Out of combat instinct you reach and grasp the closest and biggest weakness of the enemy. Are we that close? I've already touched it. <laughs> Just die. Hmm, that's a front view. What is that in our hand? A toy? If we use shackles right now, what, what would happen? I mean, it's not as responsive, but it should give a shock. Because uh, shackles do uh, pain damage. Eve's finger have almost etched into the wheelchair as her breathing quickens she force pressing on you also intensify the force pressing on you intensifies 
As if falling into deep water, you can't breathe or make sound for almost a whole minute. You seem to sense in that filthy power a demonstration to obliterate everything at the cost of self-destruction.